the goal of the sport is to knock the other guy out. That means they have a concussion. This guy was allowed to continue when he clearly was suffered some sort of brain injury. And you're paying me to be there. And it's my eyes on the fight. This is gonna be something that's gonna be a bigger story. These sports, as brutal as they can be, continue to gather some of the most significant audiences. There's no indication yet that people are not interested any longer. The bottom line is entertainment. And until you can tell me that you and your husband and your friends won't watch this kind of stuff, I'm gonna sell this heroin. Welcome to Sports Smarts, the National Sports Media Association's ongoing series of podcasts that identify and examine the meaningful issues in sports. The NSMA, a nonprofit founded in 1959 to honor and celebrate sports media's best, also supports sports journalism students, academics, and new entries to the profession. In today's episode, the first of a two-part series titled Hits, Health, and Heroes, we look at concussive sports, the ethics behind airing them, how they're covered, the impact on players, and what the future may hold for one of the most essential issues facing players, families, teams, and leagues. The format for our discussion allows us to take a hypothetical excursion to a fictional place where the challenges, ethics, and decisions swirling around concussive sports are strikingly identical to those in our world. At times, we'll ask you and the panelists to suspend disbelief and also to go along with our panel's occasional role-playing and perhaps consider what you would do if you were in their shoes. We'll also ask you to stay on the hypothetical path so we can travel where the discussion needs to go. In part one, we'll look into how television networks and journalists deal with the perceptions and realities of airing and profiting on concussive sports and how decisions are made and justified. Part two, which is also available now, looks at the tough decisions surrounding concussions and brain injuries that a pro football player and a high school recruit may need to make and where the future should take us. Our panelists are Kathy Kudravi, Executive Director of Global Sports Matters and Professor of Practice at Arizona State's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. She also was a coordinating producer at ESPN. Kathy was Editorial Director of Sports at CNN and was Digital Director at the American Sports Network. Kathy is joining us from Phoenix. From Syracuse is John Nicholson, he is a career broadcaster with two decades as a sporting event host, following more than 25 years as a news reporter and anchor. He is Professor Emeritus in Broadcast and Digital Journalism at Syracuse University, where he established and directed the Newhouse Sports Media Center. John is currently a freelance media talent coach and sports media consultant. Ted Shaker is a veteran of live television coverage as executive producer and creative lead of several Super Bowls, the NBA, U.S. Open Tennis, the Masters, NCAA basketball tournaments, and many more. Ted created a number of sports networks and has produced several seminal sports specials and documentaries. He is currently the CEO of Encourage, a startup that addresses critical issues in youth sports. Ted is joining us from New Canaan, Connecticut. From Winston-Salem, we have Dave Gorin. He is the executive director of the National Sports Media Association, a 24-year television sports veteran. He also serves as professor of practice, teaching sports broadcasting at Wake Forest University. He is the football sideline reporter on the Wake Forest Radio Network. Our moderator is Mark Ganguza, who will guide us on our journey. Here is part one of Hits Health and Heroes. The Sports Junkie Television Network, SJTV, is one of America's favorite sports networks. They do outstanding work doing live sports events, sports news, and sports entertainment specials. Occasionally, they do some special program that rather boldly takes a look at all sides of sports issues. They're in fact pretty good at doing the issues, even the issues that make them look inward. The proverbial somewhat requisite mirror, if you will. Well, SJTV's decided to do a documentary on concussions and CTEs. Awareness is pretty high, and they want to be at the fore. They decide to commission one of the country's best documentarians, who's produced several groundbreaking docs, mostly on PBS. His name is Ben Kearns, and it seems that he'll do a great job with it. 
production starts. And it looks like he's going to knock it out of the park with this one. The dock is inexpensive as docks go. They know they're going to sell it, but it really is hitting on all the right touch points for viewers. It's not only updating the topic of CTEs and concussions. In fact, SJTV has done several on the topic, but this one looks like it can be the very best. Ben Kearns, his production team, and the executives attached to the project realized that he's going to need a second hour, definitely. Yes, it's that compelling. It's that good. But the SJTV executives are pushing back hard. They don't want to relent. They want to stick to the one-hour programming decision, but Ben and his team insist that it's going to take two hours to tell the story. Various battles ensue. Shaker, you're going to play the president of SJTV. I'll play the part of Ben Kearns. The buck stops at your desk with this one. But before we get into the one or two hour thing, let me ask you this, Ted. Why would SJTV get behind this doc in the first place? Well, it's, it's certainly a topic that is uh, front of mind for lots of parents, lots of kids who play. I mean, it, you know, we see it every, every weekend on, on the football field, for example. So, I mean, to, to do this is, a, is, is to do something in the public good and um, uh, responsible on our part. But I'm being responsible, too. I need a second hour to tell this story, Ted. Why can't I get the second hour? I need it. You know, one hour is is a, a load of time. I mean, that's a lot of time. But I, I, uh, I need, you have to understand, I need the extra hour. One hour isn't going to be enough. You've been a producer. You understand what's going on. I have so many great interviews, so many people telling interested and important life-saving stories. you got to give me the two hours. Is this important enough to you in SJTV? Do you have any idea how big this is? You know, uh, you're right. I, you know, I have been a producer, and I, I understand what you're saying. And well, one of the jobs of the producer is to say exactly that, and and uh, to ask for more time, and to uh, say that I can't get it done in an hour. An hour is a long time, you know, uh, and and gives you a chance to put your very best material in one hour, and that's what we're going to do. So, Ted Shaker, now we're done role playing at least for the time being. Let me ask you this, as Ted Shaker. Isn't there enough out there about CTEs and concussions? They're horrific injuries, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But what else can be done? I think it's still an open book as to what the issues are and how difficult they are and how how, how much effect they have. Uh, in fact, uh, Ben, uh, the, the people you're talking with, um, it's going to be insightful. It's going to be insightful to everybody who watches it. That's a positive. Ted, again, as the network executive, any fear of blowback? And that's possible for sure. I mean, certainly there's some entities, leagues, who do not look at this in a positive way. So it is a double-edged sword for for our network to be able to do this, even though we have uh, contracts for billions of dollars to broadcast games of sports where this happens. I think we're doing the right thing. And uh, yeah, there is, a, there is a downside to it because... Uh, certain leagues can be really vindictive and and offer serious payback, uh, but we still think it's the right thing to do. Okay, we move on. The decision was made, Ted, to give the doc the two hours after all. The promotional materials and the screeners are all very well received, and all the TV critics love the doc. This is going to be a winner. In fact, the decision is made to move it from SJTV2 to SJTV1, the granddaddy of the networks. There was a Division One football game that wasn't so good to begin with, so that will be moved from one to two. You get a call from the House PR people. There may be a lot of blowback, in fact. You're told that you have to be careful. The league, whose games you contract for, may see the airing of the dock as maybe biting the hand that feeds you. In fact, the public may look at us as hypocrites. I'm not sure what hypocrites are. Because we televise these other events? Yes, that's it exactly. You're airing a two-hour doc about the horrors of concussive sports, but the network is feeding the beast and making a ton of money doing okay. it. I, I understand exactly what you're saying. My guess is more people will watch the football game on uh, on two than will we'll watch this documentary on one. Uh, and we will be, um, we'll be all things to all people, which, uh, you know, is... Um, is, an, is not an easy thing to pull off. So that's my take. Let's continue. The doc is going to air tomorrow, Saturday night at 8 p.m. East. It's early October, and the ratings in sports land across the entire weekend should be really good. 
Tonight, there's the airing of a somewhat averaged MMA fight card sanctioned by the SFA, the Supreme Fighting Alliance. The SFA is pretty big. They've been around for as long as MMA has been around, and their product, well, the SFA brand is all about being the nastiest and most brutal of all the mixed fighting leagues. Again, this fight card is average, but the overall hype and all the competitors' social media have frenzied the faithful. A just okay fighter in the middle of the undercard is a guy by the name of Devin McAverage. He's a step or two above journeyman status, and this fight, well, Devin may be a little overmatched, but it still should be pretty good. The fight starts, and it's typical SFA, brutal with lots of contact. First round's uneventful, but early in the second round, Devin's stung by a roundhouse kick to the head. Devin gets up slowly, a bit unsteadily, but he does get back on his feet and he gathers himself. The ref does what he's trained to do, and he's convinced that Devin can continue. Devin's corner does their job, and now Devin's committed to round three. Four seconds in, Devin's ravaged by another shot to his head that he didn't even see coming. He goes down, and Devin goes down hard. No question, the fight's over now. Devin slowly gets up. He's dazed, but he looks okay to the average viewer. However, to those who've been around the block, he got his bell rung. Well, I need to be a little more politically correct. We shouldn't use that term any longer, we're told. We shouldn't say dinged either. He's concussed. It's clear to everyone with any kind of experience or training that he's concussed. Evans' post-fight interview is brief and it's merciful. Just a couple of simple questions with easy yes or no answers. Took all of 10 seconds, if that in fact. Devin probably recited the same script he used after every bout he lost. Kathy Kadravi, knowing that it's very likely that Devin's concussed, how would you suggest to your journalism students they cover this? If my students were covering this event, I would ask them to not only to document everything that, that they saw in the fight and his responses, but I would suggest that they also talk to the fight doctor if they can, find some outside experts, research that's being done on um, CTE and concussive and subconcussive hits is pretty extensive. That um, it's relatively easy to find some information out there about the impact of all of these hits, where you can see an athlete can still get up. They've not been knocked out. They've not been unconscious, but are still experiencing some of these symptoms. I would work with them to outline what was going on and get the experts to try to, to chime in. And at that point, then you, after we talk to the experts and, and figure out that, you know, maybe McAverage really should not have gone on to that fight, we come back and we try to get to the fight promoters, the referee, someone from the referee's association, and the fight doctor to say, why did you let this continue? So, Kathy, let's say you're advising a newly graduated sports journalist. She's working for an online local media entity, and she has let's say a 500 word story to drop no more than 10 minutes after the fight ends. Is her story more about the concussion or the results of the fight or what's the mix? I think that the, the, her story should be about him being concussed and them letting the fight continue. It's less about the results and it's more about here's an example of people being unaware of what's going on with CTE, that there are these opportunities for this to happen. Um, outside of football. The, her story would absolutely have to be this guy was allowed to continue when he clearly was suffered some sort of brain injury. I would su suggest that she should write about how this fight was allowed to continue more so than so-and-so won in bout one, so-and-so won in this fight. It's more important, I think, to step away from that here's the, the X's and O's of what happened. It's our job now as journalists to put those things into context. So Kathy, let's flip things. You're now the young reporter. I'm your editor. Kathy, I don't like your story because it's about a concussion that we may mm -hmm. not even know occurred. The fight was brutal. Yeah, but that's the SFA and that's what our readers want. They want brutality. In fact, I watched the fight. There was a really great mm -hmm. roundhouse. It was a great highlight. Sure, I'll tell you that this was the biggest factor in the fight, was that this guy clearly had an injury that impacted the way he was able to fight. You can talk about all the great roundhouses. You can talk about, you know, we have all those clips that are running on social media. We have all the clips that, that have been running on SJTV. But this is something that I think a lot of people missed in this fight, and you're paying me to be there 
and it's my eyes on the fight. And this is, I think, was the biggest thing that came out of there. And this is going to be the thing that people are going to be talking about more than he had a, he had a great roundhouse, he had a great right hand. This is going to be something that's going to be a bigger story because I think what's going to happen is somebody's probably going to sue him. John Nicholson, you're a booth guy. Knowing what you know about the fight, how do you call this from the booth? I don't know if he is concussed. I know that I can see signs that he probably was concussed. And there's a big difference between signs and symptoms. Signs are what you and I can see looking on. We're not doctors. We're not experts in this kind of stuff. Symptoms are the kinds of things that the person who is concussed, the person who has been hit, can describe to the doctor who is examining him. And so if you go to the doctor then as the reporter and the doctor says, yes, he has symptoms of concussion. Yes, he has signs of concussion. Well, yeah, then I know something about it as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe what I saw, that he had signs of concussion. But let me point out also someone in response to what Kathy had to say. MMA brings people expecting to see this kind of thing every single night when these folks are fighting. If they ever give any thought to it, they expect to see one or more than one fighter get concussed on any given night. If they're thinking about safety, they might say, well, the doctor's in there. Yes, they're going to take every precaution. And if the guy is showing signs and then symptoms of being concussed, we're going to stop the fight. But people who go to MMA are not looking for artistry. They're looking for violence and dominance. And if you think that you're going to sway many of them by talking about these kinds of things, I think probably you are mistaken. I think you're going to describe the fight. You're going to say, yep, looks like he's got signs of concussion. Yeah, looks like maybe the doctor should have stopped the fight, but he didn't. That's what I would report. You know, one of the arguments is what's the difference between you know, concussions in football, which come more as a byproduct, and the MMAs and the boxing and, and those sports where the goal of the sport is to knock the other guy out. And, we, and when we say knock the other guy out or woman, that means they have a concussion. But in, let's say, football, there, there are so many concussions. What's the distinction? Right. right. I mean, it, it's a violent sport, and I think everyone who plays the sport knows what they're getting into. But the point of the sport or the goal of the sport is not to knock the other guy out. Um, you know, maybe if you're a team that had a bounty on other teams, that's a different story. But, you know, the overall goal of, of that sport is to cross the goal line with the football in your hand um, or, to stop, or to stop the person on the other side. The quote-unquote fighting sports, that's the goal is to injure the other person. And I think, you know, we need to understand that line and, and know that it's a balance for the people who run those sports. And we continue. After the main bout ends, and during the last commercial break of the broadcast, right before the wrap-up and goodbye, SJTV's coverage producer is in the production truck. She's notified by a trusted member of Devin's entourage that Devin collapsed in his dressing room, totally unconscious and totally unresponsive. The event's medical staff was in the dressing room, and they instantly prepped him for transport to the nearest hospital. The producer of the broadcast confirms the report as best she can, and she tells the play-by-play -play announcer what happened. Ted Shaker, what should the producer be telling her play-by-play -play guy? Exactly what she knows. You know, if this person has collapsed and is on the way to the hospital, uh, you, know, you want to confirm that for sure. You want to confirm it for sure. Well, yes, and, it's, it's good information. She can definitely go with it. So it's good information? Um, I think I think you got to report that. Do you advise the booth to use the term concussion, or are you being a little premature here? Are you jumping the gun a little bit? Or are you are you piling on the whole CTE concussion thing? Well, I go back to what I think John made the the point that you know he, 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 it's a slippery slope when you when you make an assumption about something. I mean that's why I don't think you want to get into uh, uh, making you know statements that you're unsure of. Uh, particularly in a situation which has so many uh, unknowns about it. So I think you stick to the, the, the information about what you have, that, you know, we saw what happened in this fight. We, we heard from him afterward. He did, this happened in the locker room. He's on the way to the hospital. I don't think you have to go farther than that 
you're telling people what you know. Kathy, you're, you're the print person, you're the social media person. What's your take on this? Again, I, I agree with Ted. I tell what I saw and what I was able to confirm. I find out where, you know, that they, that they did transport him in an ambulance. I find out where he's going and then I try to either get over to the hospital and f get any information I can, um, avoiding usually the, no offense, avoiding the public information officer because that is not going to give me anything other than we can't, you know, we can't violate HIPAA. You do what you can, try to find a nurse. You try to find somebody come through there. Did you see so-and-so come in? Did you see a, a guy look like a fighter? I'm trying to find him. You know, what's, what's the update? Try to confirm as much as you possibly can. And then I go back to my editor and say, I need to update my story. This is what, what I have found out. And this is how I think we need to, to report. You're listening to Hits Health and Heroes, a look into the effects and future of concussive sports and how the media deals with them. Our panelists are Kathy Kudravi, sports journalist and television producer, John Nicholson, veteran sportscast anchor and play-by-play -play broadcaster, Ted Shaker, television sports executive producer and television executive, and Dave Gorin, the executive director of the National Sports Media Association and a longtime television sports anchor. Let's move on. It's now Saturday morning. It's 8 a.m. The hospital cobbles together an ad hoc news briefing. Devin McAverage is in a coma. All the medical specialists have concurred. It doesn't look good, even after surgery. Devin's family has been notified. The story is growing legs. Lots of social media. In fact, there are the typical nonsensical posts, but there are a lot more concerned, impressively cogent, and immutable points being made, mostly by non-sports fans, about some sports being brutal. Mothers, fathers, friends, and relatives of those who have been permanently injured, etc. You can imagine. Back to our documentary. A promotional blitz for the film is supposed to start at 10 a.m. Eastern. The promotions are scheduled to be everywhere. Don't forget, this documentary has been highly praised. The TV and radio promos are extremely well crafted. They have to be to attract the desired audience. There's not a lot of bloodshed, no injuries depicted, no visible brutality in the promos, but you know violence is there and everyone knows it. It's a long proven way to promote most contact sports and documentaries. Ted Shaker, you're still at the helm of SJTV. It's 9.15 East now, and you just aired a live report from the hospital stating clearly that this kid may die. What are you and your promotion people thinking now? Uh, I think it's never too late to pull something, probably. This is an impossible uh, kind of question uh, to have the exact right answer to. Uh, but if it's me, uh, my, my inclination is to, is to let it run. This is the world in which we live. You know, if we're trying to be a responsible content provider, this is a reality. This sort of stuff is a reality. The fact that it's happening... And, you know, at the same time, you know, is is unfortunate. But I, I think we do more damage to ourselves if we pull it than if we air it. Let's move on. The decision is made to air the promos. It's around 4 p.m. East, and there's been no further word from the hospital, from Devin's family, from the SFA, or anyone else about his condition. For sports fans, this is a typical fall Saturday afternoon. Kathy Gudravi, you're at the network. Your reporter still is at the hospital's makeshift media center. The reporter is informed that there will be a statement at 415 East. She deduces that after the long silence that Devin McAverage has passed. She's correct. Devin, unfortunately, succumbed to his injuries. The hospital's statement about the news of Devin's passing, which actually occurred about an hour ago, is almost instantly all over social and traditional media. News outlets included, of course. Every Every sports network has it on their banners, streamers, etc. It's all over the place. Kathy, what are your thoughts about airing the documentary, given what we just learned? I think from a from a, a split between the editorial side and the promotional side, it is an opportunity to um, this. This may sound a little cold, but to use the opportunity to promote the documentary through the news. We have this really special report we had prepared tonight about um, the impact of CTE. 
I would, um, you know, very sensitively tell that story about McAverage, about what had happened to him and how um, everything played out in the fight the night before. And would also say, you know, there's some compelling further reporting that had been done by Ben Kearns in this special that we think will be will be very important for anyone who's involved in contact sports like this to examine the issues. Um, it's a it's an opportunity to sort of bridge the gap between the two, between the editorial side and the um, uh, programming side of of where we are. I think if it would was at ESPN that there would be requests to pull parts of that documentary to use as as supplementary storytelling around the news story of what happened to McAverage. You can pull some of those interviews to sell to sort of um, further tell the story of the impact of these sort of concussive hits on the brain. Kathy, I'm going to play a relative of Devin McAverage's. Some, somehow I got your office phone number. I have a simple question to ask you. Why do you have to air all these brutal sports where people get killed and maimed and their lives are affected forever? My cousin Devin was killed. What's the deal here? Why do you broadcast these events? Nobody wants to see this stuff. As part of our mission to serve the fans everywhere that they, where they are, is we want to be able to show the good and the bad side of what happens but, in sport. But, but Ms. Kadravi, let me ask you this. If you really mean that, why do you broadcast sports that are bad, where people get maimed and people get killed? I, I just can't figure this out. That is a, that's a question that we ask all the time. It's part of the serving the sports fans wherever they are, but it doesn't separate out. It doesn't mean we're condoning it by showcasing where, where those issues are. We're able to help impact and, and cause change in that sport. And yes, we do show those events. And yes, we used to glorify with, you know, the big hits and, and that, and now we make an effort to point out when, when that doesn't happen, when, when something is done right, when something is done to, to, to play the game safely. And those are our partners, and that's what people do want to see is they do want to see the NFL, they do want to see the MMA, but we are also taking them to task when they don't do the right thing. So the documentary did air with a tasteful but determined 90-second live intro that explained the events and how SJTV felt justified to put the doc on the air. It's now Sunday. Things settle a little bit, but there's still a dark cloud over the world of sports. No one wanted McAverage to pass. But we're human, aren't we? Things are supposed to move on, aren't they? The documentary got way more than its share of trolling and criticism, particularly on social media with all the graphic shots and looped video strings of the hits. But SJTV is still standing behind its decision to air the documentary and the rather graphic promos. And it seems the right choice was made to bring CTEs to light, and why not? The timing? Well, the timing was morbidly perfect. But now, there's a consistent and louder than ever din of anti-concussion sentiment all over social media. Devin's death seems to be creating a groundswell there. All the Sunday morning news shows are covering the death live from the hospital. The noise isn't just news organizations, though. It's not just sports junkies or trolls online. It's mothers, it's fathers, it's teachers, doctors, nurses, academics, etc. It's pretty loud out there. SJTV and other networks' promotion, production, and profiting on concussive sports seems to be exactly what part of the documentary should have highlighted, but it didn't. The inferences were there, but no real reporting on it. For SJTV, it looks like the hypocrisy meter is about to go nuclear. Dave Gorin, any thoughts on what's happened, what the network should do? I think they should do more. Um, I think that's the, the simple answer, and I think that would show them as uh, an organization that listens to what people say. And I, I think there's... a some hypocrisy in, in, in just almost everything we do. Um, certainly it's a balance for an organization that's that big that makes its money from these sports, but also, you know, hangs its hat on, on its, its news coverage and its ability to, to bring that to a, to a mass audience. They have to be very careful in the way it's presented, obviously, but, uh, you know, 
they've won tons of awards for doing that. And, and I would say they would be good at it. So, you know, you, ha I think somebody said earlier, being all things to all people, that's kind of the way that they operate and that, that they, that they have to be. Ted Shaker, do you agree? Uh, not, not really. I mean, uh, sports business is based on interest of, uh, People in, in playing the games, in watching the games, and attending the games. And if they don't watch the games, uh, then they're not going to be on television. And um, from what I can tell, uh, there hasn't been uh, fewer people watching. I mean, it's, it, you know, that the, these sports, as brutal as they can be, continue to gather some of the most significant audiences in, in, a, in a world which is you know, got... Where, where media is so fragmented that there's no indication yet, even though there's a reaction to what happened to this poor guy, you know, in the MMA ring, that people are not interested any longer. So what do you do? You continue to broadcast the things that people want to see, and if they don't want to watch, they don't, and they're, they then disappear from the screen. John Nicholson, I'm Joellen James. You know, I'm the woman that always runs into you at the golf course with my husband. He, he's the guy that always asks you why there isn't more snooker on television. But anyway, thanks for listening to him and tolerating him. But now you're going to have to tolerate me. I have a little problem with what you guys in television are doing. My son Jake is hooked on football. He watches with his father and brothers all the time. He's in his last season of Pop Warner and he's aching to go into high school football. And he just loves the hits. He loves the hits. I got to tell you, John, last night, my family, my two sons, my husband and I, watched Devin receive those two fatal blows. With all the football injuries we see in college and pro every game, with all the reports of suicides by CTE sufferers and everything else going on, why does your industry promote violent sports? Why does everything have to be so brutal? Why do you air these shows? What's the deal, John? Well, it's kind of interesting to me, my friend, that you and your husband were watching an MMA fight last night, because that tells me something about why we put these things on the air and why people <laughs> such as you watch it. Well, John, I, I have to tell you, it's, it's kind of like wallpaper. We always have sports on one way or the other. We were just watching it somewhat innocently. It was just there. We just so happened to tune in at the wrong time, I guess. Because there was nothing else on TV last night. Is that right, ma'am? There, well, there, were, there were no maybe, movies. Maybe not. There, there was there was no there was no snooker on the snooker channel. Come on, seriously. Let me let, let me let me explain something to you, and I I appreciate you coming up and asking me this, because it's it saves me from hitting my drive, which probably will go in the woods and concuss somebody there. But in, in all seriousness. SJTV and all sports networks are in one business, and that business is this, making money. And the reason why we air MMA and we air boxing and we would air anything else probably, honestly, that we can get away with, which involves people hitting each other like this, is because you pay to watch it. Whether you think you're paying to watch it or not, you're paying to watch it one way or another. And that means we make money. When we do a documentary like the one that we had on this weekend, when we do a documentary, essentially what we're doing is we're like we're mafia boss contributing to the church. <laughs> we're doing something to atone for our sins. And then we're going to go back and sin some more so we can make some more money. And then we can give more money to the church. Once in a while, we're going to make a documentary that points out the terrible things that happen in these concussive sports, whether we're talking about MMA or soccer, which has become another big thing recently, or about football, about the idea of, hey, no more tackling in Pop Warner football, no more contact prior to a certain age. We talk about those things, but then the truth of the matter is we're going to air it until somebody stops us, and the way you stop us is you don't watch anymore. The bottom line is entertainment. And until you can tell me that you and your husband and your friends won't watch this kind of stuff, I'm going to sell this heroin. But, Sorry. Look, just because I watch it or my kids have it on as wallpaper doesn't mean we support it. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I, I, I still can't understand why you guys can't figure out a way to make all the money you want with better 
safer sports without making kids die. The whole point of MMA and boxing is to really concuss and hurt somebody. And the, and the whole point is to entertain people. And the whole point is not to kill anybody. This is not the gladiators, or is it? The idea is people, far too many people, love to watch violence. And there are people such as Mr. McAverage, God rest his soul, who are willing to take that chance in hopes of, as you asked me a couple of minutes ago, fame and fortune, money and notoriety. They're willing to take that chance. They know they're taking the chance. We cover it. Thanks for listening to part one of Hits Health and Heroes. Our sincere thanks to Kathy Kudravi, John Nicholson, Ted Shaker, and Dave Gorin for playing along and giving us their honest insight. Part two is immediately available, so take a listen. We value any feedback about concussive sports and suggestions for our podcast, so please subscribe, join, and send us any thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. We're at National Sports Media Association on Facebook and LinkedIn at NSMA Sports Media on Twitter and Instagram. Our website and blog are at nationalsportsmedia.org. And down the short road, please look for more and the National Sports Media Association Sports Smarts podcast series. This is Kelsey Nicole Nelson. We hope you not only enjoyed the podcast, but improved your understanding of the issues and the decisions made behind them. Sports Smarts and Hits Health and Heroes are co-productions of the National Sports Media Association and Sunburst Creative Group. This podcast is the property of the National Sports Media Association. Any use of this podcast in any form without the authorization of the National Sports Media Association is forbidden. Copyright 2019, the National Sports Media Association, all rights reserved.